so this is the hardest fucking thing I've ever done, but I'm so fucking just fucked up that I'm just gonna fucking do it. I have a lot of stories to tell, but I'm gonna tell you the worst one. I figure if I tell you the worst one, the other ones won't be so bad. <clears throat> so I started running away from home at a really young age. And, um, like a lot of kids, hold on, okay, like a lot of kids in California, in LA, um, you run away, a lot of times you run away to Hollywood. There's a whole lot before this story, but I'm just going to tell this story because it's been inside of me for over 24 years, and it's caused a lot in my life. And I'm just gonna get it out, and and then I think maybe it'll be easier for me to tell other stories. There's fun stories. There's not fun stories. This is the worst fucking story. <sighs> so I was. Um, I was trafficked. I was set up. I was in a group home in Lincoln Heights. And I was a bad kid. All I wanted to do was run around and get wasted and have fun and just, just be a stupid fucking kid. And there was this girl and uh, she, she said uh, she had some friends <clears throat> and that we can go over to their house and get wasted. So we ran away, it was called AWOL. We AWOL from the group home and went to her friend's house. And uh, this, uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter if I say that they are a bunch of black dudes and she's a black girl because these type of things have happened to me by Mexican people, by Arab people, by white people. So it has nothing to do with race or anything like that. But my first horrible experience was with these people. And so she said to her that we could go to her friend's house and get wasted and smoke lots and get drunk and so I was like okay and so we went there and they started calling me Snow Bunny and I'll tell you what if you ever hear anybody call you Snow Bunny fucking leave leave I ain't playing leave So we were smoking blunts, and then uh, and I woke up. I woke up in a room on a bed that was 
like made of straw. They just came in and came in and came in. I don't know, it was days. People were just coming in and coming in and coming in. And finally, I, I, don't, I can't even remember how it happened, but it, they let me out of the room and they put me in this little outfit, like a little pair of Daisy Dukes and a red shirt, and put me on a chair in the corner, in the corner outside by their house. And I don't really remember much after that. I just remember ending up at another man's house with the man who had me, whatever, and then he left, and I was alone with this man in his house. Okay. At this time, I think I was 13, something like that, and I had already been being raped for, I don't know, a week. <laughs> And then they, so I was left alone at this person's house. And he and I don't know how it all happened. I just remember that I was being raped again at this man's house. And um, so those things were happening and then he pulled out a gun and he picked me up by my foot like this. And he just started raping me with a gun. Just holding me like this. <laughs> and then he threw me on the floor. And he stuck the gun in my mouth. And he said, do you want to kill me? And then he threw the gun at me and said, fucking do it. And I just laid there shaking. And I didn't do anything. And I didn't do anything. He handed me the gun and I didn't do anything. And then he picked me up by my hair. And he threw me into the bathroom, into the bathtub, and said, hit me in the face with a wash rag and said, clean up. And then that other guy showed up. And I got taken back to that house. And I don't know. happened I don't know I can't remember what happened but eventually I got away this is in Lincoln Heights in LA and eventually I got away and I was running down the street and I have a problem um, I guess I say triggers. Um, I'm triggered by girls in denim shorts. Like, I'm fucking triggered. Like, you can ask some of my old friends, like, 
there's been times where like I'd freak out because a girl would show up and she'd be wearing shorts just fucking shorts that's it like I don't know how many times in my life I have freaked out on other girls because they were wearing shorts I don't know I don't even know why I said that <laughs> But I do, I remember, I remember the outfit. I had a little, and it's not the kind of outfit that I used to wear because when they took me to the group home, they had arrested me for riding trains. It was the first train I ever been on. And I remember I had like my long stripy shorts on and you know, I had a big green mohawk and you know, so they had me dressed like a little hood rat. And uh, I was running down the street, I don't know how I got away, but I was running down the street and I seen two little boys, little Mexican boys riding their bikes and they were like, oh my god, are you okay? And I was like, no, and I told them what happened and they were like, oh, let's take you to our uncle's and there was a car, a car fix place. I thought I was going to be safe. So they took me to their uncle's car fix place and it happened again. <laughs> Except for this time these guys were Mexican. And the whole thing fucking happened again minus the gun. But they just passed me around and there's a group of, and I don't give a fuck, come kill me, come get me. I don't give a fuck. There's a group of gang members in Lincoln Heights called the Playboys. They fucking did it to me. I don't know who those fucking first guys were. Like a bunch of big giant black guys. They were probably in some sort of fucking gang too. But I don't know the, much about that. But I do know that the second people that did it to me we're from a gang called the Playboys in Lincoln Heights, California, in LA. So, mm, come get me, bitch. I don't give a fuck. You already ruined my fucking life, so fuck you. Come get some. Playboys. They fucking did it. They fucking, the girls made me feel like I was gonna be okay. They took their house and they were like, oh, it's cool. They were probably about my age. There were some like 14 year olds, probably some 17 year olds, you know. And uh, they were like, it's cool, we'll take care of you. We'll find you some help. And I started to be happy and then I was getting all dressed. They were like, let's get dressed up and have some fun. So, no, I'm just a fucking kid. I just want to get over things, you know what I mean? So I, I just, we were getting dressed up and putting on makeup and they were like, we'll have some fun and then, you know, you don't have to feel so horrible. And then I, I remember I was having fun. I was happy. I was happy to be around some girls. And, and then um, we went to a club and I, I really have no idea how a child got into a fucking club because it's LA you know they like they like a fucking young out there so somehow my child ass was in a fucking club and um, all of a sudden those girls were gone and I was so scared and alone Somebody said that they could help me. See, this is why I don't accept help from people anymore. Because every time somebody says they can fucking help me, they don't help me. Nobody fucking helps me. All they do is hurt me. That's all that's ever fucking happened to me. Is anytime anybody's ever said, I can help you, they never help me. They just hurt me. <laughs> and that's why I don't even accept help anymore. <laughs> so 
hill. Yeah, basically that kind of shit fucking happened to me over and over and over again. Probably like two or three more times until finally I fucking ran away again and went back to the group home that I ran away from. And I have no idea how long I was gone. I have no idea how long all this stuff happened. But I say that all of that happened to me in the span of a month. And I went back to the group home. I went back to the group home that I was at. And, uh, walked back in and that was it. I never told anybody. I just carried on with my life. And that was the beginning of a really fucked up and crazy life. And I have millions and millions of stories. I've been trying to write a book, but I can't get it out because something keeps stopping me. And that's why I'm making this video because I think that if I say the worst first, the other stuff will come easier. And I'm having a real fucking bad day because I can't even carve a pumpkin for a fucking old man because I'm so fucked up that I just decided, you know what, fuck it. Fuck it. I think I've talked about this before, but I haven't really talked about it. I more or less um, got blacked out drunk and ended up laying on the ground screaming about child molesters and, and hitting my own friends. <laughs> so... So that's the worst. That's the like the worst of the stories. I can't even remember what I was saying. I went back to the group home. And I never told anybody. stories that come before this incident and there's 20 years of stories that come after this incident. I spent my whole life riding trains and being outside and No, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I, I think I. <laughs> no, I can't even give a fucking old man a goddamn pumpkin. But that's, that's the worst of the worst. I don't know where I am in my story. I went back to the group home. And this isn't the first group home I've been in. This was like the, I don't know, the seventh or the eighth. And I, uh, I don't know, I just think I'm fucking thrown from foster home to group home to foster home to group home. I wouldn't get thrown, I would leave. And I would leave and they would catch me and they'd take me back, put me in another one. Catch me, take me back, put me in another one. If they put me in a foster home, I would just 
find out where my foster parents' money and cigarettes and liquor was, take all that shit and leave. And with the group homes, I would just leave. And, um, I was in plenty of group homes after that, and I was in plenty of group homes before that, but um, I'm trying to fucking get my thoughts together. I, there's something I want to say and I can't figure it out. <laughs> uh, it was a group home for girls with kids, and I don't even know why they put me in it because I didn't even have any kids. I, I, I was on the streets before I was even bleeding because I didn't, and the reason I say that is because because I would have been pregnant by that time if I was I don't I don't, I don't, I don't But not too long after that, I did get pregnant with my first kid. That's a whole fucking story. <laughs> That's probably gonna take me years to say. <laughs> the story, literally, is like 25 years of a black fucking mass sitting inside of me. And I think I would kick and scream and just be the most ridiculous, violent, fucked up fucking person. Because I would get blacked out drunk. I was blacked out drunk for 20 years, probably. And, you know, I, I know that there's so many times where, you know, I, I would hang out with train riders, pirates, crusty kids, you know, everybody is fucking, we're mean, we're hard, we're fucking pirates, and even I, like, my friends were always like, oh, you know, I'm a lot, I'm a lot to handle, I would hit my friends for no reason, I hit anybody, anything. Just kick, hit, bite, scream, lay on the floor, screaming about chomos. I guess I punched my friend in the face one day for no reason. I woke up out of a dead sleep and just punched my friend in the face. And I, and I woke up on the steps of a church alone in San Francisco because my friends were like, ah, fuck this bitch, and just fucking left, and left me alone, and I completely understand why, because who wants to fucking hang out with somebody who's just gonna fucking bite and hit and kick them? And I don't even know how it went there. I don't even know where I'm going anymore with this. Oh. I get these horrible heart pains. <laughs> okay, I know where I'm getting with this. What I want to say about that group home is I do not remember the name of it, but I know that it's a group home in Lincoln Heights. It's a group home for girls with babies. And the girl that was there, I'm pretty sure, was there to bring girls to be tricked out. I think she had a place to live, but she pretended like she didn't, and she got herself into these group homes so that she could find little fucking white girls and pretty little fucking Mexican girls and any little fucking girl that looked like they were good enough to trick out and take them to a place where they would be sold 
and their lives completely ruined. This is fucking hard, okay? So, just be nice to me. Putting this shit out, it's not fucking easy. So just be nice to me. Now I live outside and everything's a trigger. Somebody driving a car next to me is a trigger. Somebody walking next to me is a trigger. Somebody shutting the car door is a trigger. Uh, fucking, not too long ago, fucking, somebody smashed into the fucking trailer and just drove away. And so now I have no place to feel safe. I don't feel safe outside. I don't feel safe inside. I don't feel safe anywhere. My entire life is a trigger. And I've told my therapist that I'm a dangerous fucking person because I have great potential to fucking hurt somebody because I'm always on edge. Always on edge. And they, they said that they were going to help me find a fucking apartment. But they're not. Nobody wants to help me. I don't know how to use a computer. The coronavirus hit. I was getting help. The coronavirus hit. Now nobody's here. There's nobody to help. And I can't go to the hospital because nobody helps. There is no help. I, every time I ask for help, asking for help is a fucking trigger. Because anytime anybody ever told me that they were gonna help me, they just fucking, basically just fucked me. And so, the thought of asking for help is a trigger. I don't get any help. I don't visit my family. I barely go outside because I will be sick for the next few days. All I do is just fucking lay there and the only thing that makes me happy is my garden my best friend and my dog and my cat's fucking gone it's that fucking asshole hit the fucking trailer and drove off I mean hit it he drove his car underneath the trailer sh shredded his car in half and just left me to pick up the pieces cause that's what I do I pick up the fucking pieces that's, that's what I'm fucking here for just to pick up the pieces of a fucking repeatedly shattered fucking life my cat escaped. At least my dog didn't get hurt. At least my best friend didn't get hurt. At least I didn't get hurt. I was in the fucking bathroom when it happened. Like, he <sighs> slammed into the trailer so fucking hard that he went underneath the trailer, tipped the trailer to the side, and somehow pulled his fucked up sawed in half car out from under the trailer and drove away I got away with it because I called the cops and they didn't show up for five fucking hours because they don't care about fucking homeless people my cat is gone you know my garden used to be a sanctuary for me but now it's just full of fucking tweakers who just run around and fucking steal shit one of these days I'm gonna fucking stab one of them in the face and then I'm going to get in trouble for it. But I told my therapist. I fucking told her. I told her I need help. I, I need 
you know, they have all these programs out here where they help people get fucking apartments. And I say, I fucking need help. I need to get out of here. I need help to get into a place that's safe where I'm running water and electricity. Where I'm not just fucking always sitting in that box waiting for somebody to fucking hit it again. Or for some tweaker to come around thinking he's going to steal some shit. So I got to fucking stab him. Because I will fucking kill one of these people. 100%. Out there to the fucking universe, I'm telling you, YouTube, I'm telling, I told my therapist, I told fucking everybody, I just want to be left alone. I'm a nice lady, if I don't get fucked with, you know, I'd do anything for anybody practically, you know, if somebody came up to me and said I'm hungry, I'll fucking make him a sandwich. If somebody was cold, I have two blankets, I'll give him one, you know, I'm that fucking guy. But when people come around and just start taking shit, that's when I'm gonna start hurting people. And motherfuckers around think they can just take shit from me because they think they can take shit from anybody. Like people literally show up to the garden with pulling carts that they can just go from garden plot to garden plot to garden plot, filling up, literally filling up with other people's fucking shit. And I'm tired of it. So I'm telling you, YouTube, the world, everybody who's watching, one of these days, I'm going to kill one of those motherfuckers. And it's not going to be my fault. But I'm going to be the one to pay for it. the worst thing that's ever happened to me in my life. One of the worst things. There's plenty more. <sighs> I feel kind of better. <sighs> yeah. I don't know what else to say. This took a lot. 